Hey you guys, oh I made such a big mistake, but more on that later. So I wanted to create a really big and unique birdhouse that no one here in Denmark has. So I went online and found some really nice looking birdhouses, but they were for purple martins. I don't know what martins was, so I had to google that as well. Turns out that they're called swallows. Sw sw swallows? I, I don't know, I don't, I don't think I'm saying that right. Svela in Danish. Um, let's call them Martins. But we have them in Denmark as well, so everything should be good. Some of these birdhouses were listed at 160 euros a piece. That's easy money. Right, back to the Martins. What I didn't realize that here in Denmark, the Martins are actually classified as pests. Yeah, you're right. You heard right. Like in the same category as rats and that sort of thing. Apparently their droppings are very harmful and they do poop a lot and um, we even got pest control coming out and removing nests come on Eric you could have googled this and then done some research before you did this mansion of a birdhouse so this video is for those of you who lives outside of Denmark and actually like the Martins but please do leave a comment below if Martins are liked or hated in your part of the world and of course hit the subscribe button below that would really help now let's start building all parts here are glued together from my offcut pile and they're played down to 16mm. I'll start by cutting all these up into the different parts that I need. Okay, I drilled all the entrance holes on all pieces and I've marked them out and up. And the next step now is make these small grooves. These grooves, horizontal made, will give me some straight lines when I do the paint job later on. The blade is set on a 45 degree angle and I just made a few test runs to get the height of the blade. Alright, we're all done, turned out pretty good. I also did some pocket holes in all the parts for an easy assembly. We're almost ready to do the surface treatment, but before we do that, I want to pre-assemble these posts. They're a lot easier to do now than later on. I made a small jig for this job and it's very simple. I'll take the post, drop it down, push it up against. This is a 90 degree angle. This, these are my 45 degree cuts. Add some glue here, and then I can shoot some nails in from this side. The reason why I don't have these going further up is because I can flip it around and do the other side. The corner posts are done exactly the same way. These are the bottom of the penthouse that I'm just gonna put together with a bit of glue and some screws. And now for the surface treatment. I'm going to paint these screws black and the hole and all of the posts, of course.
Now I've painted all the grooves black and it looks a little bit messy but I'll sand them all down so they will look something like this. And this way I can use, I can apply the white paint with a roller and we'll get some really great and nice clear straight lines. But let me show you how to do it. Alright, and now for the roof. The roof consists of five pieces on each side and I'm going to make a small groove like this on each board. Now I've got two different patterns of the grooves. These boards are the top of the roof and you can see I laid out my patterns. They're a bit different so we got a groove sort of halfway in on each. Now the small grooves on the roof boards I'm going to do on my drop saw. I made all my markings here and I made a small line so I know which side of the line that I'm going to cut. Now I actually didn't know that you could set your depth on your drop saw but if you pull this little lever right here you can set the depth or you can turn this up or down depending on what kind of depth, depth you want. Something like this. Now I've just got nine more to go. These are the rooftop boards and I've just given them a bit of clear coat on all the grooves. And now I'll do same varnish, just put a bit of black paint in it. Now they're all done and I'm just going to give them a light sand and then give them some oil afterwards. Let's try the stain. Now I'm just using a cloth because I don't really want the stain to go into the grooves. That looks pretty good. Now do use a glove that can withstand the stain because or else you'll have a bit of an odd looking finger. One done and nine more to go. Right, we're ready to put the post on and just going to use a bit of glue and some nails for that. First side done, time for the end walls. I've just got a supporting piece right here that's a 90 degree angle, just to help me line it up. Now I'll start mounting the sides. I already made a line that fits on the inside so I know exactly where this is going. I'll screw in this side first and then the sides afterwards. Then I can sort of adjust them to get a 90 degree angle. I really don't want it to move so I'll put these clamp on that will prevent them, prevent it from moving. Now the left side here I want to be able to remove during winter time so I'll fasten this, this with screws from the bottom and the top. I've taken these side walls off because I want to install all the four corner posts. I've got this small distance piece that will help me keep the distance 
when I shoot the nails in from here. I'll use some construction glue, just a little bit. And now for the roof. Now I just added a few nails in both ends so I can get the distance right from this board up to the top. Now all the boards are going to be nailed in except the second one here because I want to have access to these screws. This way I can take out this piece right here and when I remove this one I can clean out the top two rooms. Best piece. Let's mount the chimney. Now just put a small block uh, right here with a clamp. This is to prevent this from going up when I shoot the nails in. 